Hello and welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School Lesson for June 6, 2021. I am your presenter today. I am the Reverend Mary Tillman, Associate Minister at Pleasant Green. We're starting a new summer quarter and our quarter study is Confident Hope. The study this quarter looks at God's gift of faith as the source of hope. Lessons from the Gospels illuminate hope and faith in the teachings and miracles of Jesus. Lessons from the epistles show how the early church understood God's gift of salvation through faith in Christ as the source of hope. We start in unit number one today, and unit number one is dealing with Jesus' teaching about faith. Our first lesson title from the adult quarterly is Freed from Worry. And our title in the Faith Pathway Bible Studies for Adults lesson is No Worries. Our devotional reading, Ezekiel 34, verses 11 through 16. Our background scripture, Matthew, the sixth chapter, verses 10 through 34. And our printed passage, Matthew, the sixth chapter, verses 25 through 34. Get your Bible, your pens, and your paper if you would like to take notes. Our key verse for today's lesson, Matthew 6, 32b and 33. From the NIV Bible it reads, Your heavenly Father knows that you need them, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. That's Matthew the 6th chapter verses 32b and 33 from the NIV Bible. I also like to read to you the New Living Translation uh, scripture for that same verse. It says, your heavenly father already knows your needs and he will give you all you need from day to day if you live for him and make the kingdom of God your primary concern. Our lesson background and introduction, I'd like to give you just a little bit of that. Just as the children typically have little or no worries for such things as food, shelter, clothing because their parents supply all their needs. As children of God, we should be worry-free as well. This kind of childlike trust and dependency mirrors the kind of faith and confidence the Lord expects of those who follow him. Those who see God as the true source of their every supply do not let outward circumstances shake their confidence in him. Because our trust is in God, neither economic downturns, the stock market, or unemployment should cause true believers to feel insecure about how we will make it. I have a good definition of worry. You might want to jot this down for future reference. It says this, Worry is a thin stream of fear trickling through the mind. If encouraged, it cuts a channel into which all other thoughts are drained. And that's by Arthur Roach, and that's spelled R-O-C-H-E. I'm going to repeat that again. Worry is a thin stream of fear trickling through the mind. If encouraged, it cuts a channel into which all other thoughts are drained. And that's by Arthur Roche. Bob Marley sang a song and it said, Don't worry, be happy. In every life we have some trouble, but when you worry, you make it double. Don't worry, be happy. There are three questions to consider in this lesson today. Number one, what was Jesus' message to his disciples and followers? Question number two, what does God say about his provision for our daily needs? And number three, what does Jesus say about worry? Let's look at the lesson's biblical context. Matthew, Mark, and Luke are referred to as the Synoptic Gospels because their messages are quite similar. These three Gospels give the same account of events in Jesus' life. However, there are some additions and deletions in each of the Synoptic Gospels, but their material is the same in each of the Gospels. 
The Gospel of Matthew presents our sovereign God as the one who is completely able to supply our needs. This lesson is part of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, which encompasses chapters 5 through 7. It is delivered to his disciples and those followers who sat at the foot of the mountain near Capernaum, listening to his powerful teachings. Jesus encouraged his listeners to focus on the spirit of the law rather than merely the letter, emphasizing moral purity of the heart over outward demonstrations of religious piety. The Sermon on the Mount outlines what it looks like to live as a follower of Christ. It emphasizes that being a part of God's kingdom requires demonstrating divine character rather than merely keeping divine commands. It is at this point in his sermon that Jesus encouraged the righteous not to be preoccupied with physical concerns, but to set their minds on pursuing the kingdom, trusting that the same God who feeds the birds will, likewise, supply all of their needs. This week's lesson's aims are, as a result of experiencing this lesson, you should be able to do these things. One, contrast Jesus' teachings about worry with your own anxieties. And two, appreciate God's care for everything in nature. And three, embrace the opportunity to trust God in everyday life. There are three lessons outlined in this Adult Pathway Sunday School book. I will share two key points from each of these outlines and expound some on each of them. Outline number one, why worry about cares? Do seek, Matthew 6, verses 25 through 27. And it reads thusly, That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. Whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear, isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And by the way, I am reading from the New Living Translation, I just like the way it says the scriptures and it just makes it a little more plain for studying purposes. Key point number one, Jesus teaches us not to worry. The people lived with tremendous economic challenges, social and political unrest. Jesus understood the life of the people in Galilee was quite difficult. That's why he said they should not be anxious about their lives, despite the hardships they faced. He said they should not be overly concerned with things that God would provide. Jesus, in his teachings, stresses that life is more important than all of these things. Do not worry about what you will eat in verse 25 does not mean that food is unimportant and they should sit and wait for God to supernaturally provide, but rather, and that takes me to point number two, key point number two, God wants us to trust him as our provider and to trust him for the things which are necessary to support life. God wants us to trust him for our daily needs. Verse 26 reads, Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? God takes care of the birds. Jesus challenged his followers to think about what he was saying. Aren't you worth more to God than a bird? This is an important lesson for believers to learn. As a child grows to maturity... Depending on parents for our support and substance, so must we as children of God depend on our Heavenly Father to provide for us. The hymnist wrote, His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. That's why I can sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches over me. Verse 27 asks a question. 
Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? The answer is absolutely no. What value can we add to our lives by worrying about things that we cannot control? So why worry? Worry cannot add an inch to our height. Jesus said, it is foolish to worry. It is useless because it will not add a single day to the length of our lives. Remember at the beginning of the lesson, I gave you this quote, worry is a thin stream of fear trickling through the mind. If encouraged, it cuts a channel into which all other thoughts are drained. And again, that's by Arthur Roach, R-O-C-H-E. As stated in the Faith Pathway Adult Sunday School book, those who place material things ahead of spiritual priorities tend to be anxious and worry about things over which they have no control. Worrying can have a devastating effect on one's life. For example, worry can damage your health, disrupt your productivity, it can affect how you treat others, and worry can reduce your ability to trust God. Outline number two. Why worry about clothes? Be satisfied. And we'll find that in Matthew 6, verses 28 through 30 from the New Living Translation Bible, and it reads, And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? Key point number one. God does not want us to worry or be anxious over things. Jesus used a parable referencing the wildflowers on the hillside, how beautiful they were, but did nothing to attain that beauty. Many of us have a passion about our clothes, coordinating our outfits, and as ladies, we want to make sure that our purses and our shoes are coordinated. Jewelry and even our eyeglasses have to be color coordinated for that total pleasing appearance. Key point number two, Jesus said, don't be stressed out and anxious over daily necessities and appearances. That's what non-believers do. Jesus emphasized that the worth of many things people seek after quickly fades. Even flowers bloom and are beautiful for a moment, but soon they wither and become worthless. If God gives such beauty to a short-lived flower's bloom, how much more will he care for us? Only God has supreme care over all things, great and small. His special love and care for humanity should propel us to not worry, but to worship. We can trust him to give us what we need. Just as an earthly father provides for the needs of his family, so does our heavenly father provide those things for which we have need. Let's look at Philippians 4 and 19. It says from the New Living Translation Bible, And this same God who takes care of me, this is Paul talking, will supply all your needs from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. Our third line and outline for the lesson today, why worry about consumptions? Do submit, and we'll see that in Matthew, the sixth chapter, verses 31 through 34 from the New Living Translation Bible. It reads, So don't worry about these things, saying, What will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Verse 33 says, Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. And verse 34, So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Let me say that again. Don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow brings its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. 
Key point number one. God is the source of all our daily needs, as we just read in verses 31 through 33. Just as we should not worry about our clothes in the pursuit of the kingdom of God, we should not worry about what we're going to eat or drink. Remember, we are more valuable to God than the birds and the flowers. He will supply all our needs according to his riches and glory. And when we look at verse 33, which is our key verse in this lesson, this is the reality check for us as believers. Jesus put it in the proper perspective when he said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. That's step number one for us. And then he goes on to say, And all these things, what things? In this case, my life, my clothes, my food, and anything else that I'm concerned about, anything else that you're concerned about that I need or that we need would be added. That's step number two. In other words, when I do my part, God steps in and does his part. Can somebody say hallelujah with me on that one? When we do our part, God will certainly do his part. David said, I've been young and now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. I just believe that God will take care of me. How about you today? Do you believe he'll take care of you? Let's get our priorities straight. Key point number two. Verse 34 says not to worry about tomorrow. It will take care of itself. So we need to stop jumping ahead of ourselves. The songwriter says, I don't know what tomorrow may bring, but I'm glad I know who holds tomorrow and I know who holds my hand. First Peter 5 and 7 says, Give all your cares and worries to God, for he cares about you. Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And this lesson reaffirms to us that we need to get our priorities straight because God's precious promises are true. And in summary, this lesson is teaching us to have a faith that has no worries, a faith that trusts God no matter what the day brings. God wants us to live by faith and to trust him completely to supply all of our needs. We know that the just shall live by faith, not sometime, but all the time. God wants us to seek his will and his direction. When we have complete trust in God, we learn to trust him completely in all things. This means to trust him in every aspect of our lives, whether that's our family, our finances, or even our physical fitness. Let's replace our worries with faith and trust. Don't worry about anything, but let's pray about everything. Ask God for direction. We must put God first. He is the number one priority in the believer's life. God's kingdom and his righteousness must absolutely must come first. There is no other option. Thank God in advance for ordering your steps in every decision that you make, not only today, but every day of your life. I hope you've gotten a thought from the lesson today, and I hope you will not worry. And if you are a worrier, just remember that worry it really empties today of its strength. So you don't want to lose the strength of today by worrying about what's going to happen tomorrow. Let's remember this. All things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Let us pray. God, our Father, give us the confidence in your provision so that our worries are silenced. As you do, may we remain with trust so that our hearts will pursue your rule. Grant us strength in the Holy Spirit to pursue your righteousness as subjects in your kingdom. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Thank you for being with us today. Have a beautiful day and a beautiful life that is completely worry-free. God bless you is my prayer.